Welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode number 644. It's the eighth in a series of all pre-recorded shows due to the coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak. And because of that, there's no question of the day. And you may remember that station management is trying to minimize the number of people in the building, so that's why they're asking me to pre-record. However, I'm doing it uh, just uh, right up before the show, so it's pretty current. Actually, it's very current. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today, and we'll get to that in a minute, is... This. As the COVID-19 crisis worsens, the world also faces a global misinformation pandemic. Conspiracy theories that behave like viruses themselves are spreading just as rapidly online as SARS-CoV-2 does offline. And we're going to go over the top 10 conspiracy theories making the rounds. Before we get started, though, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Also, all past episodes complete with video are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Okay, now this came about on Friday, yeah, Friday, a couple days ago, when one of my patients came in and he said, oh, I'm so glad I have this appointment because I couldn't wait to get your take on all of this. He used the words all of this, but he meant the coronavirus, this whole thing that we're dealing with, the businesses being closed, schools, you know, everything. And I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, I wanted to find out what you thought about whether we should have closed everything down trying to minimize interaction between us or if we should have just let nature run its course because the sooner everybody gets exposed to it, the sooner it will be gone, according to him. And by dragging it out, we're dragging it out for months and months and months. So that reminded me that there are a lot of different opinions out there. And um, I'll tell you what, I told him that, well, we talked a little bit about I guess Austria, they didn't do any social distancing. They just said, to heck with it. It is what it is. People that are going to get it, they're going to get it. And the sooner everybody's exposed, the better off we all are. People will develop immunity. And so apparently their exposure rate is very similar to ours. And yet they're out going to restaurants. Kids are going to school. Businesses are open as usual. So I don't know. But it reminded me that there are a lot of opinions out there. And I thought it'd be kind of cool to go over them. So I need to give credit to Mark Linus. He wrote the article that I am citing. He is from Cornell University. I forget his title, but he wrote these articles. Uh, one was May 14th and the other one was just about a week or so before. Okay, so the first conspiracy theory is blaming 5G. This conspiracy theory should easy, be easy to debunk. <clears throat> it is biologically impossible for viruses to spread using the electromagnetic spectrum. The latter are wave photons, while the former are biological particles composed of proteins and nucleic acids. But that isn't really the point. Conspiracy theories are enticing because they often link two things which at first might appear to be correlated. In this case, the rapid rollout of 5G networks was taking place at the same time the pandemic hit, and conspiracy theorists quickly related the two or linked the two. This is avidly promoted by anti-vaccine activists who have long been spreading fears about electromagnetic radiation egged on by the Kremlin. It's worth repeating, as the World Health Organization points out, that viruses cannot travel on mobile networks and that COVID-19 is spreading rapidly in many countries that do not even have 5G networks. Even so, this conspiracy theory, after being spread by celebrities with big social media followings, has led to cell phone towers being set on fire in the UK and elsewhere. I had no idea that was happening. That's crazy. So to recap, the first conspiracy theory is that people are blaming 5G towers for spreading it. Okay, the second one is Bill Gates as a scapegoat. 
Most conspiracy theories, like the viruses they resemble, constantly mutate and have several variants circulating at any one time. Many of these plots and subplots seem to involve Bill Gates, who became a new target of disinformation after gently criticizing the defunding of the World Health Organization. According to the New York Times, anti-vaxxers, members of QAnon, Q-A-N-O-N, I'm not sure how you say that, it's capital Q, capital A, and then small N-O-N, and right-wing pundits have seized on a video of a 2015 TED Talk given by Gates, where he discussed the Ebola outbreak and warned of a new pandemic to bolster their claims he had foreknowledge of the COVID pandemic or even purposely caused it. Wow. A recent variant of this conspiracy theory, particularly beloved by anti-vaccination activists, is the idea that COVID is part of a dastardly Gates-led plot to vaccinate the world's population. There is some truth in this, of course. Vaccinating much of the world's population may well be the only way to avoid an eventual death toll in the tens of millions. But anti-vaxxers don't believe vaccines work. Instead, some have spread the myth that Gates wants to use a vaccination program to implant digital microchips that will somehow track and control people. The spread of misinformation has meant that ID2020, a small nonprofit that focuses on establishing digital IDs for poorer people around the world, has had to call in the FBI. Again, wow. Now, you know, I am one of the founding members of the Clintonville Rotary. Well, I think we've been in existence for 12 years now. And one of the things that I learned when I first joined Rotary was that Rotary is responsible for almost eradicating polio from the face of the earth. They have spent a billion or raised a billion dollars and spent a billion dollars so far to get it to where it's almost completely gone and you'll only find it in these war-torn areas where it's very hard to get to the population. So for example, parts of Afghanistan and I think Syria still have some polio. And about three years ago, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation decided that they would take whatever money Rotary raised and triple it. So if we raised a million dollars, they would put in two million dollars. And I think that's awesome, isn't it? I can't believe some people have turned that around and made him a conspiracy. Anyway, okay. The third conspiracy theory is that the virus escaped from a Chinese lab. This one at least has the benefit of being plausible. It is true that the original epicenter of the epidemic, the Chinese city of Wuhan, also hosts a virology institute where researchers have been studying bat coronaviruses for a long time. One of these researchers, Shi Zheng Li, a prominent virologist who spent years collecting bat dung samples in caves and was the lead expert on the earlier SARS outbreak, was sufficiently concerned about the prospect that she spent days frantically checking lab records to see if anything had gone wrong. She admits breathing a sigh of relief when genetic sequencing showed that the new SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus did not match any of the viruses sampled and studied in the Wuhan Institute of Virology by her team. However, the sheer coincidence of China's lead institute studying bat coronaviruses being in the same city as the origin of the COVID outbreak has proven too juicy for conspiracists to resist. The idea was seeded originally via a slick hour-long documentary produced by the Epic Times, an English-language news outlet based in the United States with links to the Falun Gong religious cult that has long been persecuted by the Chinese Communist Party. The Epic Times insists on calling COVID the CCP virus in all of its coverage. And of course, the reason for that is the Chinese Communist Party is also known as the CCP. The theory has now tipped into the mainstream, being reported in the Washington Post, the Times, UK, and many other outlets. Okay, now the next conspiracy theory is that COVID was created as a biological weapon. A spicier variant of the COVID not only escaped from a lab, but it was intentionally created by Chinese scientists as a biowarfare weapon. According to Pew Research, Quote, nearly 3 in 10 Americans believe that COVID-19 was made in a lab, either intentionally or accidentally. 23% believe it was developed intentionally, with only 6% believing it was an accident. This theory that the Chinese somehow created the virus is particularly popular on the U.S. political right. It gained mainstream coverage thanks to U.S. Senator Tom Cotton, a Republican from Arkansas, who amplified theories first aired in the Washington Examiner, which is a highly conservative media outlet, that the Wuhan Institute of Virology is linked to Beijing's covert bioweapons program. This theory can be easily debunked now that there is unambiguous scientific evidence 
thanks to genetic sequencing, that the SARS-CoV-2 virus has entirely natural origins as a zoonotic virus originating in bats. The examiner has since added a correction at the top of the original piece, admitting the story is probably false. Now in this one, I consulted my son. We had a little conversation about this. By the way, my son has a PhD in microbiology. Although he does study plants, he is still very knowledgeable, at least in my opinion. He's also a college assistant professor. And he said that this novel change that occurred in the virus, and what he meant by that is there's this spike and there's this protein that now can line up with a receptor site in humans and that nobody could have imagined that this change would have caused that spike. And you may remember if you've seen pictures of the COVID-19 virus, it has these little projections, these little prongs that stick out, these spikes, right? And it's that that allows it to attach to proteins in humans. Nobody could have envisioned that that change would have created that. So it wasn't even on the mind or in the mindset of any researcher to try to do it. And so when I first heard that theory, I had reached out to him, this was probably a couple months ago, and he very quickly debunked that theory and it satisfied me. So no, it was not created as a method of biowarfare by the Chinese. Okay. Let's see, it looks like it's probably time for us to go to a break. Uh, we have covered so far the theory that the virus is spread through 5G cell towers, that Bill Gates is the reason behind it, that he's the scapegoat, that the virus escaped from a Chinese lab, and that the virus was purposely created as a biological weapon by China. So we've covered the first four. We'll get to the other six after the break. You're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, episode 644, and we'll be right back. You won't believe it though. I want to hear your mind And there's nothing else in the world tonight She said people don't take the time Hey, people don't take the time Hey, what's going on? It's Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. You can look for my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavico on the CBS television network where I play Danny on the hit soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavico, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. Did you know that you no longer need to visit several different dental professionals to get more complete dental care? We handle everything from cleanings and orthodontics to restoration, implants, and smile makeovers, all in my office. Get the most advanced technology and procedures available today. It's more complete dentistry. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Johanna, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavico and Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavico for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavico, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavico and Associates today. 614-262-9500. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is The Reasons We Smile. It's episode 644. Today we are bringing you the 10 most popular conspiracy theories regarding COVID-19. And we've covered the first four, and now we're going to cover the next six. Okay. So the next one, and again, this was written by a gentleman named Mark Linus. That's L-Y-N-A-S. He is from Cornell University. And he wrote this particular piece in uh, late April, April 20th, if I remember right. And there's another one that he wrote May 14th, uh, which was, what, just three days ago. And we're going to maybe have time for that. We'll find out. Okay. The next one is that the U.S. military imported COVID into China. 
The Chinese government responded to the anti-China theories with a conspiracy theory of its own that seeks to turn blame back around onto the United States. This idea was spread initially by Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Zhao Lijian, who tweeted, It's possible that the U.S. military brought the virus to Wuhan. These comments, according to Voice of America News, echoed a rumored conspiracy widely circulated in China that U.S. military personnel had brought the virus to China during their participation in the 2019 Military World Games in Wuhan last October. For China, as The Atlantic reported, this conspiracy theory and an accompanying attempt to rename COVID the USA virus was a transparent geopolitical ploy useful for domestic propaganda but not widely believed internationally. Okay, so the next conspiracy theory is that GMOs are somehow to blame. Genetically modified crops have been a target of conspiracy theorists for years, so it was hardly a surprise to see GMOs blamed in the early stages of the COVID pandemic. In early March, Italian attorney Francesco Bellota penned a bizarre article for Two Manifesto falsely claiming that genetically modified crops cause genetic pollution that allows viruses to proliferate due to the resulting environmental imbalance. Anti-GMO activists have also tried to blame modern agriculture, which is strange since the known path of the virus into the human population, as with Ebola, HIV, and many others, was through the very ancient practice of people capturing and killing wildlife. Ironically, GMOs will almost certainly be part of any vaccine solution. If any of the ongoing 70 vaccine projects work, which is a big if, that would be pretty much the only guaranteed way the world can get out of the COVID mess. Vaccines could be based on either genetically modified attenuated viruses or use antigens produced in genetically modified insects, cell lines, or plants. If GMOs do help save the world from the curse of COVID, maybe they'll stop being a dirty word. And by the way, this one is near and dear to my son heart because like I said he's a microbiologist who studies plants and what he told me is he doesn't make modifications what he does is he finds cells that have already been modified in nature and then figures out how to grow more of that one so he finds a naturally genetically modified strain and then grows it. Okay, the next conspiracy theory is that, and this one's kind of weird to me, COVID-19 doesn't actually exist. According to professional conspiracy theorists like David Ick and InfoWars Alex Jones, COVID-19 doesn't actually exist, but is a plot by the globalists elite to take away our freedoms. Early, weaker versions of this theory were prevalent on the political right in the notion that the novel coronavirus would be no worse than flu, and later versions are now influencing anti-lockdown protests across several states in the United States. Because believers increasingly refuse to observe social distancing measures, they could directly help spread the epidemic further in their localities and increase the resulting death rate. It's really interesting to me. It's really weird how you have all of these different opinions out there. And, you know, when you see the protests, you see they're not, they're not six feet apart. They're not wearing masks. And when I first saw it, you know, it was shocking. Okay, just as shocking to me is the next conspiracy theory, which is the pandemic is being manipulated by the deep state. The deep state. I don't even know what the deep state is, but let's see if we can find out. Some believe that a deep state of America's elite is plotting to undermine the president and that Dr. Anthony Fauci... The face of the U.S. coronavirus pandemic response is a secret member. Fauci's expression of disbelief when the deep state was mentioned during a press briefing supposedly gave the game away. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to insult the people that believe this one. I just think this one is hilarious. Okay, the next one is that COVID is a plot by Big Pharma. Many conspiracy theory promoters are in reality clever actors trying to sell quack products. Alex Jones, between rants about hoaxes and the New World Order, urges viewers to buy expensive miracle pills that he claims can cure all known diseases. Dr. Mercola, a quack anti-vax and anti-GMO medic who has been banned from Google due to peddling misinformation, claims that vitamins and numerous other products he sells can cure or prevent COVID. Natural News, another conspiracist site, sells all manner of pills, potions, and prepper gear. These conspiracists depend on their market on getting people to believe that evidence-based, that is conventional, medicine doesn't work and is a big plot by pharmaceutical companies to make us ill. Big pharma conspiracies are a staple of anti-vaccination narratives, so it's hardly surprising that they have transmuted into the age of the coronavirus. Okay, another conspiracy theory is that COVID death rates are inflated. So another far-right meme is that 
the idea that COVID death rates are being inflated and therefore there is no reason to observe lockdown regulations or other social distancing measures. Prominent in promoting this myth is Dr. Annie Bukasik, whose speech warning that COVID death certificates are being manipulated has been viewed more than a quarter million times on YouTube. Bukasik appears in a white lab coat and with a stethoscope around her neck, making her look like an authoritative medical source. Dig a little deeper, however, as Rolling Stone magazine did, and it turns out she's actually a far-right anti-vaccination and anti-abortion activist previously noted for bringing tiny plastic fetuses into the Montana state legislature. Her insistence that COVID death rates are inflated has, of course, no basis in fact. More likely, the current death toll is a serious undercount. Okay, so that is the 10 top conspiracy theories as it relates to the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, so when we come back from the break, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about another article written by the same gentleman, Mark Linus, and it talks about how we're facing two nightmare scenarios for the future of the COVID-19 global pandemic. The first is that no successful vaccine is ever developed, and therefore virtually all of us have to take our chances with the virus. And the second is that a vaccine is successfully developed, one that works and safely confers long-term immunity to SARS-CoV-2, but a substantial proportion of people refuse to take it because they have been influenced by the anti-vaccination movement, allowing the virus to keep spreading indefinitely. We'll explore those two more when we return. You're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, episode 644, and we'll be right back. You can take me as I am, die just a little bit. I don't know who to be, I'm a faithful cup, baby, of the sea. I know you see it too, cause you're too much for me. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko, aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Weigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile radio and roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? We're back. If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is The Reasons We Smile, episode 644. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. We're talking about, we were talking about the 10 most popular conspiracy theories as it relates to the COVID-19 pandemic. And now we're going to talk about a couple nightmare scenarios we might find in the future. The first scenario is that no successful vaccine is ever developed and therefore virtually all of us have to take our chances with the virus. The second is that a vaccine is successfully developed, one that works and safely confers long-term immunity to SARS-CoV-2, but a substantial proportion of people refuse to take it because they have been influenced by the anti-vaccination movement, allowing the virus to keep spreading indefinitely. This second scenario is looking ever more likely. A new analysis just published in Nature Journal tracks what the paper's abstract describes as the recent explosive growth in, acti- in anti-vaccination views on the social media platform Facebook. Drawing on exhaustive quantitative data from last year, the authors draw a chilling conclusion. In the battle for hearts and minds, the anti-vaxxers are winning, and their views will become dominant online in just a decade from now. So here's what the new paper shows. The authors, led by Neil Johnson from the Institute of Data, Democracy, and Politics at George Washington University in Washington, D.C., looked at the networks involving nearly 100 million individuals who expressed views regarding vaccination on Facebook. Quote, there is a new world war online surrounding trust in health expertise and science, particularly with misinformation about COVID-19, but also distrust in big pharmaceuticals and governments, Johnson says. 
Nobody knew what the field of battle looked like, though we set to find out. In previous work, Johnson had led teams studying the online proliferation of hate speech and the development of support networks for the Islamic terror group ISIS. In this study, Johnson and his co-authors detailed clusters of fans following Facebook pages with pro and anti-vaccine content, such as the 40,000 members of the page Rage Against the Vaccines versus the 1 million fans of the Gates Foundation page. In terms of total numbers of engaged individuals, pro-vaccine pages still outrank the antis by 6.9 million to 4.2 million, with the undecideds making up a much larger component totaling 74.1 million. However, the anti-vaxxers have more than double the numbers of clusters, 317 in total, compared to 124 for the pro-vaccine advocates. That means that the anti-vaxxers are more dispersed and therefore in a much better position to win over new converts from the much larger undecided population. And this is indeed what seems to be happening. So how the anti-vaxxers win? The map of the overall network shows a worrying phenomenon. While anti-vaxxers have ideologically fringe positions, they have become experts at attaching themselves to undecided clusters. Meanwhile, the pro-vaccination clusters are confined to the smallest two of the three network patches, meaning they may remain ignorant of the main conflict and have the wrong impression that they are winning, the analysis finds. In other words, the pro-vaccine people have gotten stuck in the echo chamber so dreaded by pro-science communicators. They basically talk to each other while the anti-vaxxers go out and seek new recruits. Quote, we thought we would see major public entities and state-run health departments at the center of this online battle, but we found the opposite. They are fighting off to one side in the wrong place, Johnson warns. The anti-vaxxers have another big advantage. While those supporting and defending vaccines have to stick to the science and support their views with genuine evidence, vaccine deniers can pretty much make up anything they want. As, and they do. As the authors describe, anti-vaccination activist clusters offer a wide range of potentially attractive narratives that blend topics such as safety concerns, conspiracy theories, and alternative health and medicine, and also now the cause and cure of COVID-19. As the Alliance for Science has previously reported here, and what we spent the first portion of our show today talking about, the new COVID-related conspiracy theories seeded by anti-vaxxers might appeal to anyone skeptical about 5G communications networks, GMOs, or Bill Gates. Even worse, the authors include modeling that shows the anti-vaxxer groups overtaking the pro-vaccine supporters within a decade from now. That is, unless the pro-science contingent can come up with a more effective organizing and messaging strategy. Boy, I hope they do, don't you? I really do. So how to fight back? The analysis clearly shows that pro-vaccine individuals and institutions need to up their game, particularly given the deluge of misinformation that has accompanied the COVID-19 pandemic. The data in the New Nature paper comes from before the pandemic, between February and October 2019, and it is likely that things have only gotten worse since then. For example, what is currently the second most popular petition on the White House website, having gained over half a million signatures, raises a number of medical conspiracy theories, including falsely accusing the Gates Foundation of intentionally sterilizing Kenyan children with a tetanus vaccine. According to Johnson, instead of playing whack-a-mole with a global network of communities that consume and produce misinformation, public health agencies, social media platforms, and governments can use a map like ours and an entirely new set of strategies to identify where the largest theaters of online activity are and engage and neutralize those communities peddling in misinformation so harmful to the public. So how can we do this? Clearly, pro-science messaging must be diverse, humorous, compelling, and factually accurate. And boy, I hope they get it together and I hope it works because I really, really believe in vaccines and I can't imagine what's going to happen if we have too many anti-vaccinators prevail. Well, looks like that is all the time we have today. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. Before we go, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kivitko. And if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Remember that all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. This is 
Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to thereasonswesmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614 614- 262-9588 or send an email to speak